Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and I've done it again, just bigger this time. This is my container full of electric construction equipment. I just brought it in from China. It was quite an ordeal. Spoiler alert, it involved a lot of trucks and cranes and some serious operations. But first, just like me, I'm sure you guys wanna see what's inside. So let's get to opening this thing up. There we go, all right. Oh, here it comes. Yeah. One of my loaders is definitely askew. <laughs> what you're looking at are the backsides of two of the four different machines in here. The front tire is all the way up in the air. It looks like the container got bounced around a decent amount in shipping and one of the machines wound up slightly up on the wall, partly held there by the steel cables they used to try and keep everything from shifting around in transit. Eventually once I climbed in I was able to wiggle the steering a bit and help lower that wheel down. Then, after removing the steel cables and the wheel chocks on the floor, I got to gingerly slip the first loader out. There's like a half inch of clearance between them there, so I tried to go slow and not scratch my new ride before it was even out of the box. With the first machine out, the second one was much easier to roll back, and without the need for a spotter, my dad could lend a hand as a cameraman too, even if he goes uncredited at the end. And once the first two machines were out, it was time to play around. It's amazing how quiet they are. You can see my dad taking it on the first ride, and it is much quieter than my family's dog barking from much further off in the distance. You basically can't hear the loaders at all from a distance, and then when you're right next to the machine, you just hear like a soft whir from the hydraulic motor. Since they're electric, there's obviously no combustion engine or exhaust noise. There were still two bigger machines in the back of the container, but we were having some fun playing around, digging up some dirt, and seeing what the machine could do in the first few minutes with it. And quickly we started to run out of light, so we had to close up the container and then start again tomorrow morning. What I didn't show was this entire process actually took hours and hours. Not just the rigging and delivery of the container, but also uncabling and knocking out all of those wheel chocks that were nailed down into the floor. The whole thing was just quite a mess. Good thing you didn't need a big breakfast. All right, so I ran out of light last night. Time to get the attachments and the next two loaders out here. All right, so yeah, it looks like I've got my two digger attachments, the auger, and some uh, forks for the forklift here. That I gotta get out first before I can get these next loaders out. What is this? Oh my gosh, how did I not notice this yesterday? Oh, that is awesome. Looks like this is a gift from the factory, this awesome little wire work dragon thing here. All right, where to start? To get the next two machines out, I had to get the pallet forks and the other attachments out of the way, but they're nailed to the floor using chalk blocks, just like we had under the loader tires, so those had to be banged out first, and there were a lot of them. Oh man, these are heavy. Jesus! Next came the digger attachments, which I am super excited about testing out. They should basically turn a front loader into an excavator, meaning you have the equivalent of two machines in one, almost like your own little electric backhoe. I also got an auger to test out too, and fortunately it doesn't weigh quite as much as the excavator attachments, but each of these has to be a couple hundred pounds easily, if not more. I was able to drag them out of the way enough to make room to take out that next loader, which is a larger model weighing around four and a half thousand pounds, or just over two metric tons. And then finally came the last of the four loaders. Now that all the loaders were out of the container, we wanted to start playing with them and learning the features. I made sure to spec quick hitches on these so that I could swap out the attachments easily without getting out of the cab. And I have to say that this is a really nice feature. With one hydraulic lever, you can drop your bucket and then pick it back up again or put on another attachment which to me is just a really cool and useful feature when you have several other attachments like diggers, augers, grapples, snow plows, or anything else.
Okay, got all the loaders out. Now I've got these uh, various attachments, got the auger here, a few digger attachments, and the pallet forks. Once I got the pallet fork on, I went to grab a pallet to rest the attachments on. This is my first time ever using a front loader, so you'll have to excuse me if I wasn't as efficient as possible, but I was pretty proud of myself that I was able to grab that pallet from behind the compost bins, lay it down flat on the forks, wiggle it free of the barbed wire fence, and then plop it down just where I wanted it. Obviously I could have carried it over by hand, but now that I have four wheel loaders, I don't need to lift things anymore. All right, I'm gonna try and pick up this uh, digger attachment with the forks. Got some straps here. See if I can get this rigged up. All right, let's see what happens when I lift that. So there's one digger attachment. With two more heavy attachments to go, I went back to the container for more. The pallet forks combined with the lifting straps proved to be a great way to lift and move weird shaped items like these that are too heavy to pick up myself and also too bulky to team carry with someone else for more than a few feet. <laughs> Came time for moving the sets of pallet forks, I didn't even need straps to lift them since I could just pick them up with the quick hitch and wear them over to the drop point where I'd release them from the boom. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So far, the loaders are working great and they're just so versatile. That's the cool thing about a loader. You know, putting those pallet forks on them made it easy for moving stuff around. But of course, one of the main jobs for a loader is actually loading stuff, using these big buckets to pick up dirt and other loose material. So that's what I want to try next. We've got the buckets back on here and I want to take these suckers over and try moving some dirt around and seeing what that's like. Of course, I'm not going to miss a chance to try loading up my mini truck with one of these things.
So the pallet forks are super useful. The buckets obviously work great for loose material like mulch, compost, sand and such. But next I wanted to test out the digger attachments I got to see if these electric loaders could substitute as kind of a poor man's mini excavator. The digger has its own hydraulics that you connect into the loader's lines, and they're powered by the same auxiliary hydraulic switch as the quick hitch. So once you've got the quick hitch engaged and the digger attachment on, you throw a lever that reroutes the hydraulics from the quick hitch into the digger's bucket instead. It's a really cool idea, but I was a bit worried that this would be like some products that attempt to be a hybrid of two different machines and end up not being great at either. This was obviously my first time running an excavator attachment on a front loader and only about my second or third day on a loader at all, so it took a bit of learning here. The basic operation is you lower the boom of the loader and then tilt what would have been the loader's bucket down until your digger bucket's teeth are in the ground. Then you throw the quick hitch hydraulic control to curl the digger's bucket. I went slow at first since I was still figuring out how it would operate and getting to know the machine's unique quirks. That's actually working pretty well. I mean, I don't think there was a big difference. I mean, basically, you still have boom and stick, right? Yeah. I mean, the mechanics are identical. After just a few buckets, I felt like I was getting it pretty fast, and then it was my dad's turn to bang out a little more of the growing hole we were digging. Now you are a bit limited compared to bigger excavators since the shorter reach only gives you about three and a half or four feet of digging depth, but that's enough for a lot of uses like planting trees, digging trenches, and other around the property tasks. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I think I'm gonna call this digger attachment a pretty awesome piece of kit. It worked so much better than I was expecting. Honestly, I, I really thought it was just gonna be kind of like, you know, a toy, Fisher Price, my first digger kind of thing. I didn't think it actually worked this well, but with just 10 minutes of playing around here, I've gotten a good size hole and it's pretty easy to control. If I had a hobby farm, kind of like my parents here, then I could see this as a really important tool. And that way you don't need both an excavator and a loader. You just have a loader and throw your digger attachment on the front. Next up, it was auger time. The auger attachment mounts just like all the others, with the quick hitch making it easy to pick it up and secure it without ever needing to get out and even touch it yourself. Though you still have to make the hydraulic connections by hand, and then you throw that lever that connects the hydraulic lines to the quick hitch lever. To use the auger, you basically just tilt what would have been the loader's bucket all the way down so the auger hangs freely, then you throw the quick hitch lever to turn the auger on and start lowering the boom, letting the auger do the work. This is an 8 inch auger, so the hole it makes is a bit wider than we needed for this fence post that my dad conveniently had laying around, but you get the idea. That worked pretty well though. Well, it worked perfectly. I mean, you had to get a feeling for it. If you have to put up 100 fence posts, this is going to be a much easier way to do it than hand digging or even using a powered auger. All right, so I've been playing around on the loaders for a few days now, and it's about time I gave you guys a walk around and check out what makes each of these tick. Now, they're actually quite similar. Uh, like I mentioned, I got three of the smaller ones and one of the larger ones. That was all that would fit in that 20-foot container. Uh, I figured that probably the smaller ones would be more of like a hobbyist machine, you know, and it wouldn't be as capable. That's why I wanted to make sure to get one of the bigger ones. But I will tell you, with playing around with these, these smaller ones are incredibly capable. Now, the bigger one here, it has got a ton of power. In my opinion, perhaps more power than I really need. You know, both of these are, are certainly sufficient for most people, especially in like a, uh, a small ranch type application, like what my parents have here. I mean, with this bucket here, it was no issue lifting up just entire bucket loads of mulch. When it comes to lifting with the forks, we had some big things on here. Of course, with the bigger model here, you've got a lot more power. 
Again, like you're not gonna need that much power when you're just shoveling mold, shoveling dirt, shoveling anything. But when you've got the forks on there and you're trying to lift real heavy things, that's where that extra power is really gonna come into play. But I'm incredibly impressed with just how versatile and just how capable the smaller one is here. Let's give you a walk around here though and see how these machines work. So they're both articulating loaders. That means that they have this articulating joint in the center. That's what makes them so nimble. It's super easy to just wiggle around with them. And they're a lot more nimble than like a uh, front loading tractor or something like that that only has front wheel steering. The fact that these things articulate, that they bend in the middle, makes it so easy to just go in such a tight little turning radius and you can really wiggle around in much tighter places than you would with a uh, tractor or something like that. Oh, busy. In terms of the controls here, everything is basically handled by this right joystick. Lift it backwards like this, that lifts the boom up. Forwards, that brings the boom back down. To the left, curls that bucket or whatever attachment you have. To the right, dumps the bucket or any attachment. Down here, you've got your accessory hydraulic system. So this is generally hooked up to that quick hitch that I demonstrated earlier, but I've got this nice valve up here that I can throw. And when you put it in the other position, that allows you to use all sorts of other attachments. So, you know, like we had that uh, digger attachment on the back, that was super convenient to use. The auger, basically anything that has a secondary function like that, a four in one bucket, something like a barrel grabber or some type of grapple, that sort of thing. All of that's controlled right here with this accessory handle. Up here on the console, of course, we've got our key for ignition. Uh, we've got our lights. I haven't really used these at all. We've been doing everything during the day. Obviously, I don't need the blinkers or anything, but they're there if you need something like that. You do have your uh, top light and also your hazards. Again, if you're in like, you know, a work area, construction area, something like that, you want to be extra visible. The steering wheel here, it's got this nice ball on it, which makes it super easy to steer because most of the time you're going one handed, right? You got one hand on that joystick controlling the functions, the other hand on that knob, making it really easy easy to steer. And there is no engine here, but there are two electric motors. I've got one on the front axle there, I've got a second on the rear axle here. That gives it its four wheel drive. Uh, there's a little differential on both of them. And then there's actually a third electric motor and that's what's running the hydraulics in here. So three motors total, and that separates the drive and the hydraulic motors. So you don't need such massive motors for each. In general, I will say the construction of this thing is really quite impressive. I mean, the thing is sturdy. I was a little worried about this canopy, but like, I mean, this is a roll cage. This thing is solid. It's got grade eight hardware all the way around. If you come around the back here, we've got a tow hitch in back, which is nice. You've got that two inch ball if you're gonna be towing a trailer or something. I don't know how many people actually tow with a loader, but it is nice to have that option. Now over here on the bigger loader, everything is basically the same. You know, you've got your same multifunction joystick here, the same accessory hydraulics here. One thing that is probably the biggest difference besides the extra power in this machine is that it actually has functioning doors. So there's a door latch right here and you've got doors. It's a little more of a climb up. There's a nice little step here, though I generally just step on the tire. It's kind of easier. Um, but it's, it is nice having those doors because the other one you kind of got to wiggle through the fixed guards there. The bigger loader here also has a nicer hydraulic fluid sight gauge on the side. It's a sort of combination between a fluid level and a thermometer for the fluids. So you can see what the temperature's at. Now the construction on both of these is really quite impressive. I mean, we've got serious thick steel plates here, a little bit thicker on the bigger loader to be expected, but you know, these are heavy machines. This one's about 2,200 pounds. The bigger one's over 4,500 pounds. So, you know, not lightweight. These are well-constructed heavy duty machines. Same thing with the buckets. I mean, these things are massive. They are heavy. They are well constructed. If you look at the welds on everything, the welds are actually really nice. In many places, they're even smoothed out. This is not something that was just tacked together. This is not a, you know, cheap fall apart kind of thing. If you remember when I unboxed my truck a few years ago, a lot of people were talking about the frame welds, how they weren't really good. I mean, the truck has held up great, but yeah, I'll admit that the frame welds were kind of sloppy. Here, there is no sloppy welding. This is really well constructed, and I'm very happy there to see that kind of quality in the construction. All right, now I'm sure there are a lot of people that are wondering why electric? You know, there are so many diesel loaders out there. Why go with an electric one? And well, there are several reasons. We're gonna put the environmental things aside for a minute because you know, a lot of people when they're 
dealing with work machines like this, that's not their first concern, though it's not unimportant. But if you even forget about those for a second, just the quality of life improvements here are pretty impressive. For one, it's nicer and more convenient to use. My dad and I were using them and we can still carry on a conversation. We're not shouting over the sound of an engine. There's no exhaust that you're breathing in, that awful smell and you know, it's carcinogenic. It's not giving you or your family cancer while you're driving around using it on your property or around your home. Next, if you're talking about cost, think about fuel savings. You plug this thing into the wall, it costs, I don't know, a dollar to charge it up. Then there's the maintenance. There's just so much less maintenance to do here. Yeah, you gotta check your hydraulic fluid, change that hydraulic filter every now and again, but on the actual electric side, there's, there's basically no maintenance. It's not like a gas or diesel engine. Even sure, one day the batteries are going to need to be replaced, but when that happens, it's something you can do at home by yourself. You don't have to take it to a mechanic or to a shop to work on it. Changing the batteries are only slightly more complicated than changing the batteries in your remote. You know, it's the same idea, they're just a bit heavier to lift out. That's how simple this thing is to work on. It's just a few electric motors, some batteries, and a controller. So many fewer parts to go wrong, and in my opinion, it's just a nicer, cleaner, more convenient machine to work with. And if you're the kind of person who doesn't like doing maintenance all the time or taking your machine somewhere to get fixed by a mechanic, then electric is just gonna work better for you. All right, now let's talk about why I bought four of these loaders. Originally, I just wanted one loader. You know, I wanted one loader for my parents' property here. I thought it'd be useful. Thing is, I couldn't just buy one. The factory in China where I got it, they said that their minimum order was a container full of these. In this case, that meant four loaders. I got the smallest container I could, a 20-foot container. And so I got three of the small ones, one big one, partly because the big one was really expensive compared to the smaller ones. And that way I could compare all of them, figure out you know, if I wanted a bigger one or a smaller one, and I could sell the rest. You know, I figured I'd take three loaders and find them a happy home somewhere else in the US. Someone would be really happy with these, or three some ones. But as I went through this process, I got a feeling for just how hard this really is to get these things from China. You guys have seen me buy other things, you know, my electric mini truck, my electric boat, those kinds of things. And you've seen, if you've watched those videos, just what a convoluted, long, and expensive process this is. You know, with my electric mini truck that was advertised as a $2,000 truck on Alibaba, by the time I got it here, it was $8,000 out of pocket. So these things are not cheap. I mean, that container back there, that's almost $50,000 worth of loaders and attachments sitting in that container. Which, by the way, I gotta give a shout out to my wife for letting me put that much of a risk into this. But the only reason I could do that was because I decided this wasn't just gonna be about getting a loader or even four loaders. That because this process is so difficult for people to get what I think are such useful machines, I wanted to create a service that would provide these kinds of awesome machines here in the US where you simply cannot get them. That's why I am excited to tell you that I am starting Nesher. This is a company that I think is going to serve a serious need here in the US to provide small, right-sized, high-quality electric construction equipment, earth moving equipment, and those types of machinery that we simply can't get. You guys have seen just how useful these things are. I wanted to start with these loaders because of, of how versatile they are. Like we saw, I mean, you could lift big logs, the water containers, the digger attachment, the auger, the forks, I mean, moving mulch and dirt. There's just so many things you could do with these. There's so many hobby farms, farmsteads, all sorts of things, co-ops that could use these types of machines, but they're just unavailable in the US and they're so hard to get from overseas. These are also normally super expensive types of machines. A Chinese made diesel loader of similar size to mine starts at 30,000 bucks in the US. You can barely find electric ones here. In Europe, a smaller electric one starts at a similar 30,000 bucks, meaning in the US it'd probably be well over $40,000. So I want to offer machines that you just can't get here in the US and for well under half of what they would cost elsewhere. So I started with these four. These probably aren't going to be the final product like you guys have seen. What I often do is I bring interesting machines in from China. I then figure out what needs to be done to them to improve them, to sort of Americanize them. And I work with the factory to make these types of things even better. So. Of these four loaders, I'll probably be selling three of them. If you're interested in picking one up, you can uh, head over to Nesha. You can already probably find them up there. 
but if you're watching this video more than a couple weeks after it came out, then I will likely uh, have the full sort of finished products up there because in the future, that's what I wanna be able to do is to provide these high quality, right-sized electric machines in the US, but not just that, but to provide a company that can really give service and support because yeah, you can go and find these kinds of things in China. The problem is like I've discovered, not only is it super expensive to import one or even a few of these, but there's no after sales support. You know, you are on your own. A few days after they have their money, they don't care about you anymore. I even bought an electric excavator a while ago. I filmed this whole unboxing. At some point, I'll probably edit this video. It's, it's a bit embarrassing though, so I haven't shared it yet because I basically got scammed, unfortunately. This thing showed up. It was not at all what I ordered. It didn't work. I never got the thing working. And the company at first said, yeah, yeah, we're gonna take care of it and then they stopped answering my messages. Now I can't contact them. I basically got screwed out of some serious money. Like I said, at some point I'll probably edit that video because I think it is a good learning experience for people to learn from, unfortunately, my mistakes in that sense. But that's what sort of brings me back to this whole idea is that it is so difficult, even for someone like me who has imported so much stuff from China, that you never know when you're gonna get screwed and when you're gonna be out a ton of money, not to mention things just showing up broken or, or whatever. So that's the whole goal here, is to create a service that can provide these things here in the US, local sales and support, and to give you a machine that you know you can trust. That's why I'm starting Nesher, and I'm really excited for this because I think it's gonna serve a need that is so sorely underserved right now. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a long time in the making, many, many months, a lot of expense, so much more than I expected in the beginning. All of those charges add up along the way. It was a lot of faith put into this, but I think it paid off because I am just so happy with how well these loaders are working. And I am super excited to be launching Neshare because I think this is gonna be a really important service that brings these desperately needed machines to the US and puts them in the hands of people who can really make use of them. Before I go though, it is now time to start the eBikes for Good giveaway. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, first off, welcome, but you should know that at the end of every one of my videos, I give away a free e-bike by partnering with a number of e-bike companies to someone who is in need, someone who an e-bike would really help improve their situation in life, but they just can't afford one. So if that sounds like you, I want you to go to my site, ebikeschool.com, the URL is down below, and enter the entry form there. Let me know what is your situation, how can an e-bike really improve your life, maybe you needed to get to work, to get back into exercise, to go visit your kids, anything. Let me know why it would be useful to you, but you can't afford it. There will be a random drawing among the deserving entries and it will be announced at the end of my next video. The bike that I'm giving away this week is the Angway M20. This is an awesome moped style bike. It's got these 20 inch diameter, four inch fat tires, which is my favorite size because it makes it really nimble, but you still get those nice fat tires. It's got that powerful rear motor, gets up to 20 miles an hour on throttle or even faster on pedal assist. And it is just a super fun bike for riding around. Whether you need it to go to the store, get to work, do whatever you do with an e-bike, I think this is gonna be an awesome one. I've had a ton of fun riding this thing and I know that you would enjoy it too. So if it sounds like something that you could use but you just can't afford one of these, head on over ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood, fill out the entry form and I hope that we can get you a free e-bike. Now though, it is time to announce the winner of the bike giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected entrant is... Elena R. So congratulations, I just spoke on the phone with them. I'm really glad to be getting this e-bike out. And for you, hopefully you will be the winner of that Angway M20 at the end of my next video. So make sure you enter the form there and it might be you. Now the real last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of the book giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter who will be winning a free copy of one of my books is... K4RJJ. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you gotta do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. If you don't wanna wait that long to hopefully win a free copy of one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time.